Now joining us to discuss in more de detail is Eric Lisan. He's a legal expert and lawyer, and he is live with us now from Washington. Great to have you with us, Eric. Now, uh, first of all, what is your take on this? Uh, is this uh, anonymous op-ed writer uh, an unsung hero or, as Trump says, uh, a gutless coward? There's a strong case to be made for both of these things. I think if we want to ascribe the best of intentions to this person, we would say that he's somebody that's in, uh, stuck in a, a, a dilemma between do, is doing what he or she thinks is right for the country and, um, and, and between serving the, the um, following the orders of the president, who in some ways this person is sworn to, to uphold. And it is very undemocratic for an unelected official to be actively working from inside the White House to be subverting the will of the executive. On the other hand, if it is really a situation, and there is a great deal of evidence to support the assertion that this is really a situation where the president is actively working against the interests of the United States and all of the other constitutional checks are not working, such as the Congress, because it's controlled by a party of Republican enablers, which is what this author is, is saying, then the author is doing the only thing possible by staying within to trying to help further the interests of the United States and, and implicitly the world, because the United States is, in many ways the leader of the world. So it's a, it's a very tricky dilemma, but uh, I think it's just a matter of time now between before that person is quote unquote outed, so to speak. So it won't really matter whether they're anonymous or not. And then at that point, they'll be no longer uh, in the administration. But um, this type of a whistleblower is in a difficult position. The only caveat I would have to that, though, is if, if this is really a high-ranking official, somebody that we all know that's of cabinet level, then probably they should have gone public not in an anonymous way, but by speaking uh, forthrightly and directly under their own name and trying to mount a real uh, democratic opposition rather than working in this way. Well, well, Trump says this is a national security issue and he is demanding that The New York Times uh, reveal who this is. Um, is there any legal way he could force the newspaper to do that? Can you ever see that happening? It would require a showing that uh, that some laws have been broken and that it, clearly if there was a release of classified information, but that does not appear to be the case here. This was a letter mostly involving platitudes and generalities uh, couched in some overarching rhetoric. So I think the, the president's position there is a difficult one. Uh, even more extreme is the suggestion of Rand Paul, who up to now had been known as a quote unquote libertarian and a privacy advocate, who's saying that everybody should be subjected to mandatory lie detector tests until somehow magically the author of this up to now anonymous letter is revealed. I, I think legally right now the president does not have a basis to go after this person. And indeed, uh, we all should be very wary of any efforts to do this because it just strikes uh, everybody as, as a, an act of political reprisal. But it's, it, that in itself is terrifying. It, it, we go back to the president's meeting in Helsinki where he thought uh, President, uh, Russian President Putin had a great idea in bringing over American officials to be interrogated in Russia for policy positions and statements they had made. So mm. we're really uh, in wonderland with this right now. Or a crazy town, as someone else allegedly called it the other day. Um, there's been a lot of talk <laughs> following uh, Bob Woodward's book, uh, which came out yesterday, and uh, this piece today about the 25th Amendment of the Constitution. Can you tell us a bit about that and if that might be on the cards one day? Well, that is something that has been discussed from the beginning of Trump's presidency, because really none of these things, whether the, the, the general tone of this letter or of Bob Woodward's book does not contradict anything that we've heard. And, and we've heard that there are problems like this and, and uh, problems with uh, the, the, the core competence of the president to govern. The 25th Amendment uh, is something that w was enacted in the 60s, has never remotely come into play, but was designed for situations where there, uh, seemingly, where there might be a serious medical disability 
uh, compounding the president. But there's no strict uh, uh, inhibiting the president and, and, and thereby endangering the, the, the country's interest. But since there's no details on when it can be implemented, um, the circumstances as to what should trigger it are, are very much in question. But what it would require is a very, very high barrier. It would require the cabinet, a majority of the cabinet, plus the vice president, to declare the president unfit for office. And then, on top of that, it would require the Congress, by a two-thirds majority, both houses, to declare that the president was unfit, unless the president, of course, voluntarily resigned. Right now, with the Republicans, that seems an almost impossible task. Eric, we're going to have to leave it there, I'm afraid, but thank you very much indeed. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Eric Lissan there in Washington.